Happy birthday, Dick Simmons. This is Alan Parker, president of the Justice Foundation. You know me. We first met in the chapel at the Republican National Convention in uh, 2000 that nominated George W. Bush to be president of the United States. We prayed in that chapel for the end of abortion in America. You introduced me to Senator Sam Brownback at the time. We prayed for the end of abortion. And we've prayed many, 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 many times in your condo ever since. And I have here a block of wood from a prayer time in our sessions in your condo where we said men praying for the nations, Wiley Drake and Dr. Dorenbos from Holland and Case from Holland and others were praying. And because of you, I've got two early morning men's groups, a Wednesday morning group and a Saturday morning group. And uh, you've taught me the, the need for prayer, but we still need to get men praying for those in authority. So God bless you and may your tribe increase. In Jesus' name, happy birthday. Darrell Clay, and I met uh, Dick through Promise Keeper Rally in Montgomery County at Durwood Alliance Church underneath an assigned intercessor and leader for our county, uh, Phil Wong, and that's where all the fire started. Dick came out, visited us, and he said he wanted us to come down to D.C. and help a system in intercession and never stop since. Been burning and holding Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 since that time of being with Phil Wong. Mm -hmm. And that's my testimony concerning Dick. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. And I haven't given God no rest. My name is Howard Beam and I live in Winona, Mississippi. It's about an hour and a half north of Jackson, Mississippi, two hours south of Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, my wife and I are founders and directors of a ministry called Shepherd's Rest International to minister to pastors and missionaries and their families. I'm also a transitional pastor at North Carrollton Baptist Church there in the area. I first met Dick Simmons in the mid 80s. I was pastoring on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and I was a part of a fellowship of churches that got very involved in the pro-life movement and we were doing rescue uh, in Baton Rouge and New Orleans and on the coast. And then uh, a whole bunch of us, hundreds of us from all over the, the nation went to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we did uh, a pro-life uh, rally there in, in a sit-in type thing. And uh, we were arrested, uh, thrown up into the buses and taken to Atlanta prison. And uh, we were there for a week. And it was during that time that I first met Dick. We instantly became good friends. Uh, we were part of a 24-hour prayer rally that uh, went on while we were there witnessing to the, to the convicts and so on. And after that, just the, the relationship grew and continued and we had him down on the coast to minister. And later the Lord called us to Russia and we were missionaries there for 11 years. And Dick came uh, a couple of times to, to teach uh, his principles of prayer and revival uh, there in Russia and helped to translate his materials into Russian uh, and just stayed in touch through the years and always been inspired by his life and his dedication and, and his passion for, for prayer specifically and, and for revival. Hi, my name is Jim Pritchard. I'm uh, from Northfield, Minnesota. Uh, I have seven kids. I uh, first met Dick in 1992. He was uh, uh, we got his name. We in our church were looking for ways of helping men uh, come into greater experience of prayer, and so we had Dick in, and he did uh, a boot camp with us, and it was amazing. We had probably a third of the men showed up, uh, not just for the uh, weekend seminar itself, but uh, for early morning prayer. Uh, for 21 days and that kicked off a, a season in our church that lasted uh, 12 years uh, that we had prayer almost every morning of the week with the men and um, it really not only launched us in prayer but also in concern for the government we had people coming out to DC and uh, visiting with congressmen and senators and it 
elevated greatly our appreciation and my personal appreciation for what goes on in Washington, D.C., uh, the weight that our leaders carry and how we can help them fulfill uh, the purposes that God has for them through our prayers. So that's been our experience and it's really been a great blessing for us. Hi, my name is Bill Landers. I'm from Torrance, California, uh, which is about two miles from the ocean. Um, and I'm a real estate appraiser by profession. I have my own business. And in April of 2005, uh, there was a South Bay Men's Prayer Conference that I got invited to. And there was about 120 men there uh, on a Friday night and then an all day Saturday. And for the first time truly, uh, I heard and understood what it meant for men to be in a relationship with Christ that was mm -hmm. Uh, holy and I understood from that time with Dick Simmons that we are to be men who are uh, according to Psalm 24 uh, men who have clean hands and a pure heart because that's the only way we're able to approach the the, the throne of God and uh, so when uh, when Dick invited us uh, into the following week uh, we went on into the next week and then a full 21 days um, where we actually, basically, the first week repented. The mm -hmm. second week, we uh, began to understand who we were, who we are in Christ, and the authority that we've been given. And then the third week, we began to understand the times that we're in, and we begin to uh, develop uh, a, a lifestyle of prayer and understanding that there's a daily need for prayer, and that if men are not standing... Uh, in their homes and in their communities in the hour that we're in, uh, then we're not doing our job. And so what I've seen through the years uh, with men is that we started a, a march, uh, in March of 2008, we started a men's prayer group. And uh, I've seen men come in who were barely praying table prayers. But as they begin to uh, listen to other men pray, that they began to catch what God was doing in other men. And I always say that prayer is not taught, but it's caught. And so these men now who were praying table prayers in 2008, you have to, you have to almost stop them because, because they, they've so caught on to um, what, the need for prayer, and, and God has slowly but surely developed them into the men that uh, they're to become. Hi, my name is Paul Peterson. I'm from Spokane, Washington. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Dick Simmons and the impact he's had on my life. Um, his message of prayer was introduced to me in 1983 at a summer camp in, uh, in Oregon in the Willamette Valley. And uh, just happened to be there uh, when Dick was scheduled to be a speaker, and, and obviously he, his his message of uh, of intercessory prayer was uh, was powerful. Uh, I was in a position to invite him to Spokane to be a speaker at the Full Gospel Businessmen's uh, meeting later that month. Uh, got better acquainted with him, more acquainted with the message of intercessory prayer and and saving the nation. And long story short, Dick and I established a relationship in which he, he came back on uh, repeated occasions to Spokane. We put together seminars now called boot camps. And ultimately, it uh, would have been uh, late 1980s, maybe the mid 1980s, Dick and Barb moved to Spokane and we established a 24 seven prayer house in Spokane. So uh, from that time of meeting Dick until the present time, I have been impacted by his influence. Uh, I have been impacted by the, uh, uh, by the privilege of intercessory prayer, warfare, if you please. I have been impacted by the by the uh, uh, 
Number one, as he says, prayer is work. And impacted by the work part. Uh, well, first of all, he says prayer works. I've seen the prayer working. I've seen that prayer is work and that prayer leads to work, but it's what God needs from his people. He needs a presence of his people declaring the kingdom authoritatively on earth. And that has been a privilege of mine to come into that recognition and that activation in my life. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hello, I'm Mark Benz. I'm a retired military chaplain. I live in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and have been involved with Men for Nations uh, for a couple of decades. I met Dick Simmons in the early 80s at a pastor's conference uh, south of Portland, where he gave a clear message uh, to begin to pray intensively for the stopping of abortion, for the shedding of blood, but even more so for our elected officials, as what First Timothy gives to us in understanding that it's what we should be doing. To, as Paul says, first of all, I urge you by the mercies of God to pray for those who, kings and all those who are in authority so that we might be able to live a peaceful and a godly life. That means that we can actually do that. And later on, it says that it's the men that are to be doing that. And that's what Dick has been calling, is calling men to pray because in verse 8 of that same chapter 2 of First Timothy, the Greek word there is anair, which means males. It doesn't mean anthropos. The other Greek word, which is inclusive oftentimes of, of male and female, is here called males, anair. So God wants men to come and gather themselves together to pray, lifting up holy hands without any dissension or any dis dis disagreements, anger. With that, God will begin to listen to what the men really want. Because there is to be a unity between heaven and earth to be able to accomplish the task that God wants done. That's why Jesus came. Because he did it for us because we weren't doing it for ourselves. And once he begins to reside in us, we can now do that work. Once we get the Holy Spirit working in, and moving in us, we can now do the work that he wants us to do. So I encourage you to find somebody in your own local congregation, right where you are, to begin to pray. So that there's maybe two or three of you together that begin to pray. Go to your church or meet in your own home, wherever you might meet. But meet together to begin to pray intensively for what it is that God would want you to do. Happy birthday, Dick. I wanted to say thank you for all the years of prayer and personal investment in my life. You've truly been a papa to me in the place of prayer. I just wanted to say thank you. You've been such a blessing to me. I learned so much from you. You've taught me the power of praying in the spirit, the wisdom of protracted meetings and the grace of God, that God acts on behalf of those that wait for him. And you've provoked me to call 300 men in Whatcom County to early morning prayer. <laughs> I remember the first boot camp that we hosted at Christ the King years ago and how the Lord marked and literally changed me forever <laughs> as I learned about the history of revival, watched you weep over babies in the womb and prayed in the spirit over our little city, Bellingham, as you've done for many years. Dick, you've been faithful. You have carried the Father's heart for this nation and in the grace of God, we want to carry on your legacy in the years to come. Big shoes to fill. When I think about you, Dick, you're a simple man, a man of breakthrough. And it's because you spent countless hours in the weeping room, in the war room with the Lord of the breakthrough. You know, it's kind of like the two fish that were swimming up the river and they hit this brick wall. One fish turned to the other fish and said, damn. <laughs> Listen, Dick, the dam is going to break. I believe it. And revival is coming. God is rending the heavens. He will come down from Washington to Washington. That the lamb who is slain may receive his due reward in this great nation of America. Dick, on your 85th birthday, as you have prayed for many years from Psalm 85, will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Lord, show us your steadfast love and grant to us your salvation. Dick, thank you for leading the way. Happy 85th birthday. 
I love you.